Okay, kind of exciting day. I got these boxes on Friday, but never bothered to open them because I was busy. Where to start? I got some upgrades for the sprayer. Most of it was bought through NozzleNinja.com. Uh, not advertising, I'm just saying this is where I got it. They haven't given me anything aside from a big hefty bill. But shipped right to us. Um, this box is parts for the tender trailer. Uh, way better hookups for the hoses, so I'm going to put these on. Uh, I also got a sprayer calibrator. So you kind of set this thing, you tell what it is, like, oh, I've got 20. Oh, my thumb's in the way. Uh, well, you can't really tell. I got 20 inch spacing on my nozzles. And I'm going to tell my computer to spray at uh, 10 gallons an acre or something like that. And this tells you within 2% of what your equivalent gallons per minute is. And yeah, it. I don't know fully how to use it, but it seems to be fairly straightforward. And this is for the range that we need. And it only takes about 10 seconds a tip. Another one. I'm really excited for this one. This is AccuVolume by Simon Innovations. I've seen them around for a few years. What it is, in essence, is an extremely high sensitivity uh, hydrostatic pressure sensor. It's this guy. It ends up going off the side of the sump on the tank. There. I know a good welder, i.e. my brother, and we can weld a bung on there and thread that guy in. This guy is gonna sit outside at my fill station on the driver's side. This guy sits in the cab. It's got a day mode, a night mode, some different colors, I guess. And what this guy does is you calibrate it and you essentially are able to ignore your sight glass. And that's a good thing because our sight glass typically gets cloudy during the year. I usually change it once a year and it's a shitty job to do. The next thing is what I am most excited about. is this boom recirculation kit. And what it's going to do is it is going to allow us... Um, I don't have any great pictures of it, to be honest, right now. Is it's a, it's a bunch of extra hoses and a few valves and fittings, but it allows us to tie the, the pump to the end of the boom, which is kind of old school technology. So it's going to go all the way out to the left end of the boom and then go through the whole boom and then back and into the tank. And that's great for going up and down the road because it's going to recirculate so that you never have to get to the edge of the field and spray off a little bit to make sure your booms are fully purged or like you can rinse it back to the tank so that you know you don't you don't have to go out and open your end caps. So you'll rinse to the tank, you'll spray that off, you'll rinse to the tank, you'll spray that off, and then you'll go and kick out the bottom of the sump and you're done. It is gonna be slick, so and it literally operates on one switch. So that's gonna be real slick. So here is our this is a 2016 Case IH 4440 Patriot. It's got aim command, 120 foot booms. Uh, nozzles are on 20 inch centers. And it's got a 1200 or 1250 gallon tank. And so, I guess you can probably see my boxes over there. We'll go under. I wanna see where things are gonna fit. So this is my controller for the Boom recirculation kit. This is my AccuVolume system. And I gotta figure out where I'm gonna mount some stuff. I'm just noticing 
we must have forgot to flip the disconnect. So, yeah, that shouldn't be on right now. Neither should that little blue light. So I'm going to go find a, a charger just because I like to keep my batteries tended. Thought I had my battery charger in here, but I don't. That should be there. That's disconnected. So we're in the cab and trying to figure out where I want to run things, where I want to mount things. Uh, the valves I'm going to put right here. The electric ones for the rinsing, I'm going to knock these out and I have valves or switches that go there. I'm probably going to have to slide this guy down and keep that mounted in the same spot. And I might actually see if this might work really well to mount my AccuVolume. And yeah, so this guy potentially, I'm going to see what's inside here. Doesn't feel like much. Potentially, I might put him right there. Well, my display here is too big for my cell phone grabber, which is unfortunate because that would have been nice. And I can't drill holes into the back. I might have to get some real good double-sided adhesive and a ram mount and try that. Okay, so... We did some moving around. I made a plate. I, I did decide on definitely where something's going to mount. I had hopes for something else. I'll touch on that in a second. Well, actually, I'll touch on this right now. I had hoped to move this ram mount to be the other way, going down. The problem is where the cables hook up, it would be covered with the, uh, the arm. I was thinking of mounting this right there. I'm not sure I love it there. I don't hate it there though. Anyhow, the Accu volume without a doubt is going to sit there. I don't hate it up there. I really don't. Just how to mount it is going to be the trickier part. based on that kind of clip thing it's on. Um, could potentially make a plate. I could do an offset plate, I think. That might be the way to go. So I'm definitely leaning that way. So if I could tuck you in behind or off to, just off to the side. Definitely not interfering with the mirror at that point. We'll kind of lay it. Stay there. It's just a little high for my liking. Um Still to be determined, but I'm not necessarily against that. Got the sprayer in the heated part of my uncle's shop. Keep in mind, this is pretty much his garage too. So I'd ask real nicely to be able to park it in here. So obviously the biggest reason it, I have it in the shop is because it's warm in here. It's going to be a lot nicer. Um, the tools are here. I'm not going to be bulky, but the biggest thing is I'm not worried about plastic stuff snapping, whether that's zip ties or covers or these end caps. So when I, I'm, I'm going to be all over the place here, guys, and I'm sorry about that, but it's kind of 
how things are going to be. I believe I can do probably 80 to 90% of the boom recirculation kit without unfolding the wings. The, we're going to, I'm going to do some rejigging here for, I'm essentially going to take this guy out for now and I'm going to put, I might even put it right here is the valve that goes. I just got to modify the plumbing so that I can run the two rinse valves, which are this one and this one. So this one is either closed or goes to the tank rinse bar. We don't have a chemical eductor, inductor, whatever. Holy shit, that scared the hell out of me. Don't know why it does it all the time. I just was in deep thought. So yeah, we don't have a chemical induction and we do have tank rinse, which is, this is your source here. And this is the rinse bar. So by essentially going yay to yay, I'm ignoring this valve. I might mount a valve on the outside here, just across here. And again, might find a way to mount it here somehow. I'm not really sure, but this one's a little more complicated, but really simple in the grand scheme of things. So we're gonna weld, I shouldn't say weld the sensor, but weld a fitting for a sensor up in the bottom of the sump there, probably right around here is about perfect. That's gonna be for the AccuVolume. I've been, well, I've been helping my brother weld. I, I built this just based on guessing. I was really, really, really close. Just, I said, oh, wow, it's probably just kind of going off memory. I'm like, eh, it's probably six to eight inches from this plate to the top here. It's actually just over eight. So I got lucky, but I kind of had this spun around the other way like i need this forward so i just gotta flip this side to side and it'll sit up there and this is where my AccuVolume remote display is gonna sit